Hey, this is Robin Heppel. You're probably watching this video for one of three reasons. First, you are a Funeral Future subscriber and you like to keep up with how I like to push the envelope on how to market your funeral home on the internet. Or maybe you watched Funeral One's Revolution presentation and you wanted to get a second opinion and kind of cut through the hype of Joe's presentation and just someone to give you the straight goods. Or maybe you're expecting me to start an online war with Joe and Funeral One, and if that's the case, you're going to be disappointed. I have a lot of respect for Joe and what he's done, and also a lot of the other website development companies. But I think I look at Funeral Home websites a little bit differently than they do. Where a lot of times they focus on the latest technologies, I come at it from a marketing perspective. And I truly believe that your website should be more than a website and should be your virtual marketing platform. So as I get into this review, I'm going to assume that you are an owner or manager of a locally owned funeral home and that you're considering upgrading your current website and you just want to make sense of it all. But before I get started, I have to tell you why I'm doing this review. Joe and his team crossed the line when they promoted their webinar on my Facebook page. First of all, you should be very careful when you're using social media to do any promotions, but secondly, don't do it off of the back of others. Now I know that Joe gets pretty excited, but I think some of the numbers that they said about the number of registrants was a little exaggerated. The one thing that I want you to remember is that families make arrangements with people. Funeral service is a relationship business. Disney inspired is great for movies. Google friendly is great for funeral home websites. So here we are, and at first look, Joe is right. There's nothing like what we've ever seen before. But remember, that goes with your visitors too. Honoring life? great concept. But again, as we're looking above the fold, I'm more like a deer in headlights and I really don't know where to look. Not so good when 80% of your visitors are there to find obits. And then all of a sudden, it's showtime. Now I must admit, it was a great movie. Family focused, excellent. But again, from a usability standpoint, 80% of the people are being distracted. They want to find obits. And with that in mind, after figuring out to click on recent tributes, it takes three clicks, not one click, to find the obit they're looking for. Not catering to the biggest segment of your visitors is not a great way to foster relationships with droves of potential client families. Scrolling to the bottom of the page, here's a section of good content. Content can be put anywhere on your website, albeit on Joe's site it's very well laid out. But the main focus of this review is design and usability, not content. And as we get to the bottom of the page, Joe mentioned that this is very Web 2.0 social media friendly, and I hope they have a social media integration strategy and not just the links at the bottom of the page. But that's not the worst part of it. You see, Joe must have insisted to put the link to Funeral One's website in the best position for links on Schettinger's page. I would suggest to Schettinger's to have that link removed and get that Google juice pointing to one of their more prominent pages and scrap the developer link altogether. Now on a positive note, this image gallery on the sliding scale was a nice touch, going from traditional ceremonies to unique reflections. Great job. Unfortunately though, I'm not impressed with the dial a counselor at three bucks a minute. The thing is, it's an unfortunate truth that once the funeral is over, most of the people are going to get back to their busy lives. So sure, a few might use it, but it's not going to flood your inbox or mailbox with pre-need leads. And charging on a permanent basis just kind of chintzifies the whole grief counselor concept. Now the E aftercare that Funeral One has had is great. And when I saw this picture, I thought, good job, Joe. You got rid of the dude who looks like Ravine the Hypnotist from the 80s. And then I clicked the link and saw Dr. Simpson. Hey, good marketing, Joe. You made me click the link. And again, I do like the E aftercare concept. It's a lot better than the dial a counselor. Now here we are in the administrative dashboard. Very clean, looks easy to use, but something's making me go, hmm, Anyway, there's some great functionality. I really like the email marketing component. The same with editing of the pictures. But then we jump back to the live site and the chinsel meter goes off again. I just don't believe holding someone's online memorial for ransom is very cool. You've got 14 days to pay for daddy's memorial or it's gone. Nothing against online memorials, but I think forcing families in this manner isn't very cool. Then there was all the hype for the Facebook-like functionality. Here definitely they chase technology just a little too far and forgot to realize that people join Facebook because it's under their own volition. Forcing people to join somewhere else, 
is like me telling you, leave your town and move to my community. Facebook works because you have a choice. But if you force someone to grieve somewhere where you want them and not on their terms, they will resent you. So coming back to the dashboard, a couple things dawned on me. Having to approve uploaded pictures is one thing, but having to review a bunch of videos is a whole new headache. But the other thing that had been bothering me, the one thing, their proprietary system will do a lot of things, but it's one true genius is that it'll lock you in. You'll be so tied to the system that your switching costs in the future will be huge. So just know what you are getting into and potentially hard to get out of. So before I conclude, as I mentioned earlier, a funeral home website is better to be Google friendly than Disney inspired. And there are two SEO flaws in this site. And I've actually sent a personal email to Michael Scheninger to let him know so he can get those fixed. And I have to admit, there's a lot of great features on this site, but I think sometimes they chase the technology just a little too far. And they also got chintzy in the process. Now, if you're a huge operator like the Scheningers, then a site like this may actually help you completely differentiate yourself in your market. But for smaller family-owned funeral homes, say between 100 and 500 calls, you're probably going to want a website that helps you build those personal relationships between the families that you will be serving and the people that will be serving them, which is you. And a site like this can get you lost. And I have to admit, Joe, there's a lot of great features in here and you've raised the bar. So for that, I thank you. But if you're the owner of a small or medium-sized family-owned funeral home and you still have a lot of questions about website development for your funeral home, then I want you to join me this Friday for a free information session called The 7 Costly Mistakes Other Funeral Home Owners Make When Hiring a Web Development Firm. Just click the link adjacent to this video and register by filling out the form and pressing the Register Now button. Or go to FuneralWebsiteSecrets.com. Thank you for your time. This is Robin Heppel.